What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. I'm John the Video Guy and in this video tutorial we're going to be talking about 3D rotating cubes. So something that looks like this, how to create something like this and then make it animate. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that using my logo. You don't have to necessarily use my logo but I will provide it down in the link down below so feel free to grab that or feel free to follow along using your own logo. Now a quick note though it does have to be a perfect square otherwise it won't work so like in Photoshop here I do have it in 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. So just make sure it's a square and with that let's get started. If you find value in this tutorial feel free to hit the like button it really helps my channel out. Thanks so much and let's get started with today's tutorial. So I'm inside Adobe After Effects and what we'll do first is create a new composition. Now I'll make this 1920 by 1080. 30 seconds is fine, so these settings are optimal for me. I'll click OK and we'll click and drag this. And I'll click S on this keyboard, I'll scale it down a little bit just so it's a little it can fit more into the frame. All right, guys, so this is very important. We got to go back to ninth grade geometry. How many sides are on a cube? I think the answer is six. So we'll duplicate the layer six times. So just hit Command D. And you should have six different layers here that are completely identical. And if you select all of them, what you can do is create them into a 3D layer by clicking this little cube on one of them. And that basically puts us into 3D space. And next, we'll create a new 3D camera by going into Layer, New Camera. And we'll click OK. And what this allows us to do is use our 3D camera controls to really see what's going on here. So you have these th three different controls up here to kind of reposition, realign, and adjust this active camera to kind of see how the cube will look. All right, so all of these are in the same exact spot. And what we'll do to start is we'll actually solo this one and this one, and we'll go one side by one side, you know, work on one side at a time. And the key to doing this is by using the different controls down here where you can see different camera angles, the front, left, top, and back. And this is probably one of the most challenging parts of the tutorial is making sure the sides align. So for example here, I'm gonna start with one of the sides. So if we bring up rotation for this, the second uh, side here, what we can do is just rotate this. So we'll just change it to an exactly 90 degrees. That way we know ex it's exact. And so when we zoom in here using our camera controls and we spin around, we can see that we do have this turned. Now we just need to find a way to perfectly align it to the edge. And that's where these controls come in very nicely. You can change it to the top view and you can actually see this from the top. So obviously nothing's there because if you were actually seeing this from the top, you would not see anything. So you can click on P to bring up position and change the value of these different parameters to get it to be exact. So if we bring up our zoom, our zoom uh, little magnifying glass, we can zoom in here and just make sure these are flush. So if you click on the layer, you can actually just click up and down arrows just to get it to where it needs to be. And this is as far as I can zoom in. So this is as good as it's gonna get, I think. It looks good, yeah. You just wanna make sure these are all flush for all sides. And then if we go back to our active camera, or CAC, camera one. We'll zoom back out here. We can see that that side is now pretty much flush to that uh, other side. All right, so we'll work on the next one. We'll solo this one now. We'll bring up R on the rotation and we'll change this to 720. And we'll be doing the other side here. So if we go back to camera to top, bring up Z, you can actually um, Use these controls here to realign it. And we'll zoom in here to this corner and we'll just realign until it's pretty flush with the 
the original side. So that looks pretty good. Go back to camera one. And if we bring it up, we can see uh, we got a cube going on here. All right, we'll solo this one, bring up rotation. And we'll do a complete 180 here to do the back side. Bring up position and bring back the position somewhere back there. We'll go back to the top view. We can realign it accordingly. If you guys have any questions about this, feel free to drop comments below, but I'm just gonna work through on trying to align the rest of these. That looks pretty good as is. We'll go back to camera one and see how that looks. Not bad, it could be a little bit. Every pixel matters in this situation, so it's just very, um, it's very tricky and challenging to try to do this. All right, so we'll go to this one now and we'll do the top. So if we bring up rotation, I think it's that one. I think it's the first value, yep. Bring this to 90, then Y, bring it up. And if we go to top view, you'll see that um, you actually can see this side now. And what you can do is just adjust the Z to get it aligned with all the other ones. That looks pretty good. Go back to our camera one view. So it does need to be a little down. So if we go into our front view, we can see that it is too high. So we'll just bring down the Z so that it's flush with the other layers top. Go back to camera one. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we'll focus on the bottom. So since we're on the last one, I'm just gonna unsolo all of these now. That way we can focus on this. And if we bring up P, it'll be the Y axis. And then if we bring up R, it's always tricky to see which one it is. I think it's this one, yep. Bring it 90, go back to P, Let's see, if we go back to front, we zoom out here, you can see, yeah, it's definitely far away here. Just bring this back in. That looks good. Now if we go to left, we can realign it. All right, go back to active camera. We'll see how this looks. Looks pretty good. I'm just adjusting it like arrow by arrow here to see. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. So here we go, guys. We successfully made a flush six-sided cube here in Adobe After Effects. Trust me guys, that was the hardest part of the tutorial. So now let's look at how we can animate this. And the, probably the best way to do this is by creating a null object. All right, so we'll go to layer, new, null object. And we'll rename this, and it's very important, we'll name this the animator. You must name it the animator. You have to name your layers, otherwise you just lose track of them. All right, so the first thing you wanna do here is create an it into a 3D layer by clicking that switch. And the thing that you have to keep in mind with the anchor point is when you link all of these to the animator, and you go to R, it will rotate around it. So if you don't want it to rotate, you know, if you want to rotate it from the center, the anchor point of the, the animator or the null object has to be in the center of the cube. So in order to do that, we can easily do, we'll unpick whip these to the, ink, to the null object and we'll go into top view. If we go into top view here, what you can do 
is click on the animator. And realign it so that way it's closer to the center. Just the Y so that it's closer to the center. All right, so now when we parent, parent, pick whip this to the animator, all these layers, and we go to R, bring up rotation, and we bring it up, now it rotates from the center. So I'm going to reset these parameters and we'll go back to. We'll adjust our camera so it looks something like this. And we can see the different sides. And what we'll do is keyframe the Y rotation over time. So say if you want it to revolve three times over 30 seconds, and we got this type of animation going. And then to, to export this, what we'll do is just go to composition, add the render queue, and if you want to preserve the transparency, what you can do is click here, go to RGB or RGB plus alpha, and under format options, change it to Apple ProRes 444, click OK. This is a great codec if you want to preserve transparency. And choose outlook location, I'm gonna go right in here, and then you can click render. Okay guys, so that's how you create a 3D rotating cube inside Adobe After Effects. I hope this tutorial has helped you if you're looking to accomplish this. If you want to take your logo animation to the next level, you know, and say not only do you want to make a 3D rotating cube, but maybe you want to learn how to animate a logo, I did create another tutorial on, you know, the specifics when it comes to actually animating different logo properties and different elements. So I'll link a tutorial to that uh, up here in the corner. Feel free to go watch that if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.